Reset 3D makes it easy to apply, modify, and review the results of loads of various types on a variety of different elements. Before we can actually go ahead and apply loads, we need to first make sure we have basic load cases set up. So I'll open basic load cases, and here I've already established a few basic load cases. Each basic load case I have also has a category assigned to it, and this is important in case we want to automatically create load combinations per the IBC. Now I also have gravity load, so the self-weight of the structure assigned in the dead load category as well. I'm gonna add one more basic load case, so let's add a wind in the Z direction, and we'll assign it to the wind load category. And then when I'm ready, I can go ahead and close out of the basic load cases. Now I can start to add the loads from the draw load section of the home tab. So the first load I'm gonna go ahead and add is a nodal load. So a nodal load is a load that's applied to a, to a point and so you can see we have three different options for load. The first is a, a load, and that would be either like a point load or a moment. The second would be a displacement, really an, an enforced displacement. And so this would be used in a situation where you're evaluating a structure that's maybe failing. So like a sinking support or a footing, for instance, basically we're looking to determine how the displacement affects the structure. The other option in this case is a mass. So basically we're using an applied mass at a node to use in a dynamic analysis. So in this case, maybe it's a piece of equipment that's on the roof that you want to see how it vibrates or it, it, it itself is vibrating and you wanna take that into account in the dynamic analysis. But in this case, I'm gonna choose a load. I can choose the direction. So most loads have global directions. That's the uppercase X, Y, and Z. And in this case, we also have global moments around the X, Y, and Z axis. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the X direction. I'm gonna choose my basic load case, wind X, and then I'm gonna choose a magnitude, in this case, negative two and a half kips. And then I'm gonna go ahead, click to apply, and I'm going to choose a node that I wanna to apply it to. In this case, I'm gonna apply it to this top node on the top of the column here. Now I applied my load in kips, and so one thing I can do is I can go into the unit setting, I can change units if I want. So if I wanted to use pounds for forces, or I wanted to use pound inches for linear forces, I could go ahead and do that. Now, once I've set this up exactly like I want to, I can go ahead and save these unit settings as the default, and I can always get back to the standard imperial or standard metric settings as well. Now, the next type of load I'm gonna apply is gonna be a line load. So if I open up line load, again, we can see in the directions that we have various directions for global, and then the lowercase x, y, and z are local directions. So this is gonna pertain to the local axis of a specific member. So if a sloped member, maybe the local axis X, Y, or Z has changed, but this is useful for all different types of loads. We also have this PX, PY, PZ, which is the projected load. So a load projected along that axis. And then we have our moments. So in this case, a, a torque, and then also a load applied to the projected surface of a member. So if we wanted to provide, if we wanted to apply a projected surface load for this distributed load, we can do that here. In this case, again, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a Y direction because I'm gonna apply some dead load along the first floor, this first level uh, beams to be our cladding, basically. So I'm gonna choose our dead load. We'll choose a start magnitude. So let's choose negative 0.15 kips per linear, linear foot. And then I could apply it upon the full length or partial length. In this case, I'm gonna choose the full length. And again, I'm gonna to click to apply. And I'm just gonna apply these beams along the edge of the member here. So I've gotta to apply to those five beams. Now I also wanna apply a projected distributed load on our roof. So I'm gonna use this for, let's say a sliding snow load. And so instead of the direction Y, I'm gonna choose a direction PY. I'm gonna choose our BLC to be snow load, and we can choose a different start and end magnitude in this case. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose, instead of 150 pounds a linear foot, I'll choose 250 pounds a linear foot, and we do wanna apply it to the full length of the member. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply, and apply this projected snow load onto these roof beams. Now at any time, if I wanna make a change to a member, maybe I wanted to make a change to the value of the load for these two end members. So if I click on one of the members, we can see that the line load properties are available in the properties panel. I can also use the control button to select a similar load. 
and we have those two loads selected. And since they have similar properties, I can kind of bulk change them together. So maybe I want to make this, um, you know, point, point 0.1 and point 0.175. So maybe those, those members on the exterior of my roof get a smaller load. So I'm finished here, I'm going to go ahead and click Escape. So the next load I want to apply is a point load. Now this differs slightly from a nodal load in the sense that I'm going to apply this point load along the length of a member. So basically somewhere within between the I and the J nodes of a member. And so if I choose my direction Y here, we have the same types of direction, global, local, and also moments. I'm going to choose my BLC and then also my magnitude here. So I'll set my magnitude to be negative 0.3. And then I can choose a location. Now, in this case, I'm going to choose click to apply. And I'm just going to apply this to the bottom cord of my trusses here. So in this case, maybe we have a partition that um, hangs from the bottom cord of this truss here. And so in this case, we want that load to be up as a point load on the bottom cord at 50% along the length of those members. Now, I can go back to the home and we can go ahead and switch this to wireframe so we can see this a little bit better if we need to. Now I'm going to go ahead and select uh, a specific uh, grouping of members. So I'm going to get a view here and select this low roof as well as this high roof here. And I'm also going to make sure I select this uh, wall. So let's go ahead and select all of those members together. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock my selection. So basically I just want the members on the roof so that I can go ahead and apply next our area loads. So I'm going to choose an area load. This is a member area load. Basically, this is an area load that will apply loads to members within that same plane. Now I can choose again a direction, but really when I choose a direction and also my load direction, it's defined based on the way that I draw in the surface load. So in this case, I have to define an A, B, C, and D node. The A node obviously is going to be the first node that I define, the B the second, the C the third, and the D the fourth. So in this case, let's start by using a dead load. So I'm going to apply a dead load. My load direction, in this case, I want it to be AB. And so when I set the load direction, I have to be cognizant of the way that I'm actually drawing the load. And so let's go ahead and set a magnitude. In this case, I'll set 15 pounds a, linear, a square foot. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw that on my roof here. So we can just draw that on our roof. And you can see here that we've got that load in the direction that I defined. My A point was here and my B point was here. So we're in that same direction. Now I can also go ahead and do the same thing down here on our sloped roof. So if I go ahead and draw in a load along the length of the roof here, I can see the load put in. Now, one thing you'll notice here is obviously I, I made a mistake and I did this on purpose, but I need to change the direction. So I can out, at any time go ahead and select the load or that I applied and I can actually change the load direction. So my AB was along this uh, length here along the slope of the roof. I actually need to change my load distribution to be along the BC edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just change my load direction to be BC. Now I'm going to go ahead and rotate around here and I'm going to go ahead and apply a new load. So let's go back to home here. Let's close out and back to the area load. And again, let's just apply another load on the roof here. So I'll just apply our second load here. So we've got our second load there on the roof. Now at any time I can go ahead and switch my basic load case. So in this case, I want to switch to my snow load and I want to apply a projected load in the Y direction on the roof. So just like the snow load we applied for the distributed load on the roof, let's apply on the low roof an area load for that projected load. So again, I'm going to choose a magnitude. So let's set this to be, I don't know, 25 pounds a square foot. And again, we can go ahead and just draw in this load by clicking on the extents. So we've got the one load in. Again, we'll use the same direction drawing so that we get the same distribution. And we've got our second load in. So we've got our two projected loads then in that case. Now I'm going to turn off my selection lock. And the last load I want to add here is another area load in this case, and I want to add a wind load. So I'm going to choose a wind load in the X direction because I want to put a wind load on this exterior frame. And so if I choose the load direction, in this case, I want this to be a two-way direction. And so this way, it's going to distribute evenly all the load to all the different members in that plane. I also want to make sure the direction is set. So I'm going to choose the direction to be X. And I'll just go ahead and draw in our area load. 
And so now we've got that area load there on the structure. Now I'm going to go ahead and select, use the select elements by property to select all of our plates here. So I'll select all of our plates and use our lock selection because I want to apply some plate loading to these plates. And it's just easier when I only have those selected. So now I can go back to the home tab and I'm going to go ahead and choose a plate surface load. So I can choose the BLC we want to apply. In this case, I'm going to choose a live load. I can also choose the direction again, local, global, projected. I'm going to choose a local z-axis and then I'm going to choose 40 pounds a square foot and I'll apply to my selected member. So I'm going to go ahead and select all those plates and then click apply to a selected. And so really quickly and easily, I can apply all of those different surface loads. Now, the last load that I want to apply before we go ahead and run the analysis is a wall surface load. So if I click wall surface load, I'm going to switch our BLC here to our final one that we haven't really done anything with, which is Win Z. And we're going to apply a wall surface load to the wall panel here. And so I'm going to choose the direction. In this case, I'm going to set that global direction to be Z. I'll choose a distribution. We can choose from uniform or tapered. In this case, I'm going to choose tapered and I'm going to set my top and bottom magnitudes. So let's set our top magnitude to be 25 pounds a square foot and our bottom magnitude to be 15 pounds a square foot. Now we can choose a height to be the entire wall or we could choose partial. When we choose partial, we'd actually set the distance above the bottom that the load would start and then we would set a total height for that load. In this case, I'm just gonna do it on the entire wall, choose click to apply and then apply it to that wall. Now once I've actually added my physical load, I can go into my load combinations to create load combinations for the model. Now in this case, I already have some load combinations created based on the codes. Um, so I chose to use the IVC ASD code. We could go ahead and choose the load combination generated to generate those load combinations if we wish. And we can also choose which combinations we want to solve in this case. In this case, it's a small model. I'm just gonna choose to run and solve all 15 of these load combinations. And so to do that, right from this interface, I'm gonna go ahead and click solve batch plus envelope. Once the solution is complete, we can go ahead and review the different results in spreadsheet form and also graphically. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the warning log and also close out of our node reactions and our load combination spreadsheet here. And we can go ahead and start to look at the loads. The first thing I want to look at though is we, on the view tab here, you can see that we have the ability to look at different loads graphically. So we can switch really quickly between them using these drop downs. So if I switch here to dead load, we can see all the dead load applied. The other thing I wanted to show here is once we've run the analysis, our area loads are broken down into what we call transient loads. Basically, if we look at the dead load now, it's broken down into a bunch of line loads. Basically, it now creates that area load and goes to the line loads based on the tributary distance and the load distribution direction. We can also go ahead and look at the transient loads created for the snow load on our low roof. And so we have the distribution for those two different types of loads. Additionally, it's important to note that tension and compression only members, as well as vertical brace and horizontal brace members will not receive any load during the area load attribution. Now, if I go ahead and turn off the loads, the first thing I wanna look at is deflections. So I can say, I can show the deflection with an undeflected shadow or with the deflected shadow. I'm gonna choose without. And so we can see our deflection here. Now, the deflection is based on uh, scaling. So if I go ahead into our view tab and click view results, I can go change the scaling of our deflection. So we'll choose maybe just to scale it four times the actual deflection. I could also choose to animate the deflection so I can animate this result. So I can just choose this particular load combination and I can choose any load combination that I want. And I can also tweak the way that this animates. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and change the scale and maybe increase the animation speed. And so we can see um, how that animation would show the deflection in our model. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and export this animation and save it as a video. Now let's go ahead and turn off the deflected shape. And along with deflections goes our node deflection spreadsheet and also our member deflection spreadsheet. So if I open both of those spreadsheets from the Explorer panel over here, we can see the envelope results for both of those. Now we can see the results spreadsheet. Now at any time, if I wanted to see the maximum deflections, maybe I wanted to see what the max deflection in, let's say the X direction was. I can go ahead and select this, right click, choose sort and an absolute max to min. And so this is gonna give us absolute max and min uh, deflections at, an, at a specific node. 
In addition to deflections, I can go ahead and look at node reactions in a spreadsheet. So here we have our node reaction spreadsheet. And in the same way, I can go ahead and sort to see, okay, what's the worst case vertical reaction I have? So I have 66 kips at my wall panel two. Now I can also look at these same results graphically. So if I go back to the home tab, I have our quick view buttons. I could go ahead and turn on, let's say the Y direction loads on this um, on the model. Now with those loads, I also need to use our load combination toggle. So I can go ahead and select a specific load combination to see the different results for different load combinations. We can also go ahead and turn on member forces. So let's go ahead and look at the moment and we'll go ahead and turn off the node reactions. Now, when we have the moment on, in this case, we have the moment diagrams, we don't have any magnitudes. So I'm gonna go back to the view here and choose results. And under members, I'm just gonna flip on magnitudes and click apply. And so now we can see the magnitudes of all of those different moments that we have on those beams. We can also look at these same forces in a spreadsheet. So if I go up to the results tab, I can choose either an envelope based or a load combination based spreadsheet. So if I choose envelope, I can say I want to look at maybe member forces in this case, right? So I can see the member forces by member for the worst case for axial shear, torque, moment, et cetera. So we have all of these, including different maximums and also the end reaction. So if you wanted to give this information really quickly to a connection designer, you could do that. Next, we can go ahead and look at our plate forces. So I'm going to go back to our home tab again. Let's turn off our member forces and let's turn on our plate forces. So let's just turn on maybe a von Mies stress in this case. So we have a von Mies stress is reported in KSI. We can also look at that same plate stress or those same plate stresses in a table as well. So if we expand this table, we can see all the different forces at different plate labels for the different values. And so we can see those same results in spreadsheet form. Finally, let's go ahead and look at the wall panel forces. So if I'm back to the home tab, if I want to take my view back to my its original state, I can go ahead and click the reset view button and then choose wall panel. And let's look at the in-plane force in my wall panels. So we can have our in-plane wall panel forces here. So we can see our wall panel forces um, in the walls. We can also see the legend and this legend is available for any plate or any wall panel forces. So I'm also gonna go ahead and use our select element by properties tool to enable only the wall panels. So I wanna select only these wall panels. And then we'll go ahead and lock the selection. And if we go to the results tab here, we can also use a tool called internal force summation tools. So we have an internal force summation tool that works anywhere on the model, but we also have one that's specific to walls. So if I go ahead and click on the wall internal force summation tool, you can see that the mesh of the wall is automatically presented. And so I can select a mesh node and then another mesh node and we'll get a dialogue that'll give us the summation. Basically by clicking two points, it defines the cutting line and then gives us a sum of forces between those two points only in that specific wall. So it's really nice to look at these results maybe in a pier or we need to look at results for maybe where a lintel is gonna be or something like that. So to be able to take these contour forces and look at them uh, very specifically so that we can do our design. For more information about RISA 3D, visit risa.com.